worship God. Hallelujah Jesus. Did you come to hear a word from God? Did you come to join in the praise? Did you come to join in the singing? What did you come in the house to do? Huh? Or did you come out with your hand out? Amen. Gimme, gimme. Gimme, gimme, gimme. Gimme, 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 gimme. Huh? Amen. Sometimes people just come in the house of the Lord to get. They don't come in the house of the Lord to give. Huh? 
But I came to give a praise. I came to give a thanks. I came to show gratitude. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, saints of the most high God. One more time, give God a shout. That's what I'm talking about. Don't you know, hallelujah, your participation, hallelujah, in the service makes the flow of the word, hallelujah, easy. Huh? When you don't participate in the worship, it's a press for the preacher to bring the word. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah, Jesus. So every time the Lord says something to you today, I want you to just give him a shout. It can be right in the middle of something that's being said in the word. But if you feel that thing, if you understand that thing, if the word quicken you, if the word strengthen you, you need to say something. You need to give God a praise. You need to give God a shout. I am a it's not enough to come to a service and get a good word and just say hallelujah hallelujah the scriptures say let the redeemer of the Lord say so hallelujah to stand up and be counted I want the world to know I've been redeemed. Huh? I ain't got no quiet praise. I'm going to try to get to this word, but I ain't got no quiet praise. I keep coming over here because I feel the spirit of the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. I guess I'm starting to feel it over here too. Look at, look at God. Look at God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shout out Messiah. I don't know you about you, but I've been in a service where the preacher couldn't even preach because the worship was so powerful. Hallelujah, Jesus. I want a service like that. I want to come in again where I can't even say a word. Hallelujah, because the praises go up so. Ebo shout out. That I will say that they usher in the spirit of God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. My God, I will see you. I'm trying to stop, but you know what? He's all over me. Hey, glory, and he's keeping me alive. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, my God. I will see Grab your Bibles. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to try to get to this word. If somebody's sitting next to you and they stale and they ain't participating in the worship, you ain't got to say nothing to them. Just start rebuking that spirit in your mind. Hallelujah. Because we want the spirit of the Lord to have liberty in his house. Amen, somebody. Glory. Hallelujah. Galatians, the fifth chapter. How many of you know that the word of God is good? Yes. Amen. The fifth chapter. Amen. You know Pastor Joe, she's going to talk. Amen, somebody. Verse 7 and uh, uh, through um, 10. The scripture says, ye did run well. Oh, come on now. <laughs> come on now. Come on. Can I get somebody to say that word? Who? Who? <laughs> hallelujah. Who did hinder you? Amen. That ye, hallelujah, should not obey the truth. Hallelujah, this persuasion cometh, hallelujah, not of him that have called you. Hallelujah. A little leaven leaveth the whole lump. 
I have confidence in you through the Lord that ye will be none otherwise minded, but he that troubleth you shall bear his judgment whosoever he be. Father, we thank you for this word. We thank you for your loving kindness and your tender mercies. And we ask you to bless us as we deliver the word. Lord, bless the receiver of the word. We pray for good ground in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, you may be seated. Amen. Before I get into the word, I want to say something about the fast next week. We're going to be fasting three days. We don't want you to take this fast as if, amen, take this fast as if it's uh, just a regular fast, be nonchalant about this fast, but we want you to be specific in this fasting, intentional, I should say, praise God, hallelujah, and we want you to do it like we did the 30-day fasting, we want you to pray your prayer time, we want you to cut out all social media, Amen, and TV, and all of that, amen, good stuff, and, and those of you who had your children fasting, how you had them not watching TV or whatever, you do however the Lord will lead you, but it's just three days this time, it's not 30 days, and you can eat as much vegetables and fruits as you want, drink uh, liquids, amen, hallelujah, preferably water or juices, things like that, but, but, but I want you to understand that Hallelujah. When Esther fasted, she fasted for three days. Amen. Hallelujah. Because she had an enemy, praise God, that had come up against, hallelujah, the whole nation. I said the whole nation. We have an enemy that have come up against the whole church. Hallelujah, somebody. Oh, I wish I had a witness. Amen. Praise God. So she said, look, let's, let's fast. I'm going to fast. Tell the people to fast. Amen. My handmaidens are going to fast before I go to the king. Amen. Praise God. Because I'm looking for the king to do something miraculous. I'm looking for a miracle. I'm looking, hallelujah, that when I enter into the courtroom, amen, praise God, he first, he don't kill me. And second, amen, that the the people of God get delivered. Uh, amen, somebody. Uh, I wish I had somebody that understand this three-day fast is going to help somebody get delivered. Uh, amen, hallelujah. Because we have a great enemy, which the scripture calls him an uh, adversary. Amen, praise be unto God that came to kill, steal, and destroy hallelujah he's trying to destroy the young lives of men and women that are saved and sanctified y'all don't hear what i'm saying he's not worried about the people in the world because he already got them he's trying to get some that he don't have amen praise god so we're gonna need some fasting hallelujah warriors that pray and seek god's face on behalf of the congregation on behalf of of this church can I get a witness you don't understand on the third day for three days Jonah was in the belly of the whale Y'all don't understand. And while he was there, God could deal with him. When he came out of the belly of the well, he was ready to preach a word. Amen, somebody. I declare and decree that in this three days, God is going to deal with you in such a way that when you get done, you're going to be ready to run. Hallelujah, this is not just no regular fact. Do you hear what I'm saying? You don't understand on the third day, Jesus rose. He went down into hell and took the keys of death, hell, and the grave. And he rose with all power. After these three days, you're going to rise with all You don't understand. You're going to be victorious. Amen. All things went under his foot after he rose. That's 
why he had to go to the cross. He said, look, amen, I don't have dominion on this earth anymore. Satan is doing what he wants. But I got to come back, take the keys of hell, death, and the grave in order to have dominion. So God said in this three days, you're going to get up having dominion. You're going to be able to rule over your flesh. Over the devil, over your circumstance. Somebody give God a shout. So don't take this fast lightly. Don't take the fast lightly. Don't be nonchalant about it. Be intentional. Huh? Go in the word and look what happened after three days. Amen. In the book of Isaiah, the Lord said on the third day, he'll revive us. Yeah, some of you are dead and you need reviving. This fast will revive you. If you're intentional about it. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So, 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 so don't be nonchalant. Let me calm down. Don't be nonchalant. Be intentional. Pray. If there's ever a time for you to pray, pray, pray during this fast. Brother Malik, is there ever a time for you to read the word and meditate on it? The scripture says, blessed is a man, amen, praise God, that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly and all of that. He said, but he that meditate on my word day and night, he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Amen. So there's many benefits in this three-day fast. Amen. Somebody said, I ain't never fast before. I, I don't know if I can do it. You better try it. Yeah. Amen. You want some deliverance. You want some help. You want some strength. You want to be victorious. You better, you better, you better jump on board. Amen. Amen. Somebody give God a shout. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm going to get to the word. Hallelujah. Let me calm down. Y'all sit down because y'all keeping me riled. <laughs> Hallelujah. See, I keep coming over here. My God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay, let me get to the word. My God. God is going to be doing some great things. He's already moving. He's already moving people, oh God, and you need to understand. Amen. Hallelujah. The season in which you, which you in. We come to church and we don't understand the seasons that we're in. Amen. Praise God. You see folks come out in the wintertime, don't have no coat. It was, hallelujah, my 10 minus 10 degrees, and a woman was out with a, a spaghetti strap shirt on. She didn't have no coat. I said, she ain't even, she ain't cold. Or what is it? Maybe she don't own a coat. I don't know what it is, but she was not dressed for the weather. Amen. Praise God. We come in the house of God, and we're not dressed by, for the weather. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. We come in, we got on wool and it's hot. Amen, somebody. Hallelujah, Jesus. Uh, my, uh, my son wears shorts all the way through the winter until it get real cold. Well, he don't do it no more, but like he used to, he used to wear shorts all year round. Not dressed properly for the weather. Amen. Praise be unto God. You got to recognize what season it is. How God is moving when you come into the house of the Lord. Don't just come to church and say, oh, I'm coming and I'm going to see a program program or hear a program but no Lord where are you at in this season what are you doing in this season amen because God is doing something with every church in hallelujah a season amen praise be unto God I know you thought you just went in for the program but God is doing something what is he working amen praise God if you don't know amen praise God then you won't be able hallelujah to help work the vision you need to know what God is doing in this season. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then you need to come dress for the season. Amen. Praise God. If God is asking for sacrifice, amen. Praise God. He don't expect you to come in begging. He expects you to come in giving. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. If God is saying he's going to pour us out a blessing, he's not expecting you to give. He's expecting you to receive. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So you got to know what, I mean, I want you to just take a few minutes here right now and ask God, what, what season is it? Do you know? Do you know what season you're in? Hallelujah. Well, if you don't know, let me tell you, you're in the open door season. Amen. 
I set before you an open door, Revelation 3. But that's something else. We'll talk about that later. Hallelujah, Jesus. But that's the season that our church is in, in case you didn't know. So if you don't understand that, why don't you read your Bible and you can figure it out. Amen. Amen. So here Paul is talking to the church of Galatians. He's talking to Galatians or Galactia, Galactica. Hallelujah. And he's talking to Galatians and he's telling them, praise be unto God. He's questioning, amen, their walk because he said, you did run well. He said, look, you started off running real good. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. You, you were at church at every service. Amen. You were there praying. You were fasting when the saints were fasting. When the saints went out witnessing, you were right there. Amen. They could call on you to lead the prayer group. They could call on you. Amen. Praise God to, to, to sacrifice in the giving. Amen. He said, but, but who did hinder you? And he doesn't necessarily mean a person. Hallelujah. Because it could be a thing or what hindered you amen that stopped you in your tracks he said look you believe he's telling them because somebody came in the church Jewish brothers come in talking about that these saints needed to be circumcised amen praise God and that 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 command was under the law praise be unto God and he's saying look hallelujah I, I've taught you one thing that we hallelujah are saved by grace through Jesus Christ and now amen another man have come in and want to bring you under bondage by saying that you must be circumcised and somehow they begin to take on a man praise God that doctrine so he says you did run well who did hinder you and I'm asking the saints today hallelujah you did run well but who began to tell you something contrary to the word of God who began to tell you something contrary to what you've been taught amen praise God we'll run in the house of the Lord when we all jacked up God fixes us up amen makes us look pretty uh, amen then all of a sudden we believe that we can run without God Hallelujah. And we think that we're still going to look pretty. Don't you know that when you leave God, you take off your white robe and you put your filthy garments back on? Huh? Come on now. But we don't, we don't understand that. We don't, we don't, I don't know who I'm talking to that's saved and sanctified. I don't know where your mind is this morning, but, but God is trying to help you to understand that you can't stop running. The race is not given to the swift nor to the strong, amen, but to him that endureth unto the end. Amen. Praise God. He said, you did, you did, you did run well. Who did hinder you? Uh, amen. And then he says, this persuasion come not of him that called you. Listen, the way your mind have changed uh, is not from God. Amen. Praise God. This change of mind that you have in your service to God has come straight from the enemy. Hallelujah. Because God, when you first came to him, laid it out how he wanted you to serve him he laid it out he said look I want you to be ye holy for I am holy amen he said I want you to come out from among them and be separate he laid it out he said I want you to meditate on my word day and night I want you to be filled with my spirit he said after the Holy Ghost have come upon you you shall receive power he laid it all out how he wanted you to walk but somewhere along the line, somebody got in your ear and said it don't take all of that. You don't have to do all of that. Amen. Praise be unto God. Hallelujah. But he said this did not come from the one that called you. Huh? This, this didn't come from the person that called you. Amen. Because the one that called you will not, hallelujah, tell you to not come into where he's called you. Come on. <laughs> Amen. Huh? Amen. Huh? Huh? Why would he tell you to stay home? When he called you into his house. He said forsake not the assembly of yourselves together. 
Amen. That's what he says. Amen. Hallelujah. So somebody telling you, oh, girl, you ain't got to go today or you need to stay home, man. Don't even, man, let's go to the game and kick it. Amen. That did not come from him. Amen, somebody. I need somebody praying for me right now. That did not come from him. Amen. Praise God. He said this, this persuasion, they, they, they didn't, they, uh, hallelujah, just say it to you one time. They talked to you and got in your ear, amen, until they turned you around. Come on, hallelujah. Can I get a witness? Amen. Even though you're still here this morning, it does not mean that you haven't turned around. There's many people that go to church and sit in the pew and they're gone already. It looked like they still a part of the church. Amen. But they have left already. Somebody give God a shout. The scripture says, amen, hallelujah, praise God, hallelujah, in Timothy, 1 Timothy, the fourth chapter, now the spirit, verse 1, speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits, uh, misleading spirits, deceiving spirits, uh, wandering spirits, uh, amen, imposters, uh, amen, they look like they're Christians, uh, they look like they're saved and we're listening to them and they're persuading us to turn from the living God he said look this was going to happen in the latter days amen praise God hallelujah trying to get others amen to veer off the course of God anything that takes you from God is not from God anything I don't care if it's your job I don't care if it's school I don't care if it's your family I don't care if it's your husband, your wife, anything that takes you from God is not of God. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I got to work. Oh, and I just hear the Holy Ghost. Because a lot of times we'll say, a man don't eat, amen, hallelujah, or work, he don't eat. I got to work. A man don't take care of his own house. He's worse than an infidel. The same God that gave you that job can give you another job that will enable you to be in his house. Huh? Because God knows the less that you hear of him, the, the less you'll desire him. Huh? So if you're not coming in his house and you're not getting in a relationship with him, the more you're going to want to go to the world. So why would he give you a job that's going to take you out of his house and you can't come in and hear a word? Huh? Why are he going to give you all your courses, hallelujah, in school that you can't even get to the house of God? That ain't come from God. That was your choice. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. That was your choice. People say, oh, uh, you, um, you know, you can't get here. You can't get everybody, amen, not to work second. I ain't nobody in here, hallelujah, working second that want to get on first. Amen. Ain't nobody in here got a job on second, amen, that want to be, hallelujah, on first or third. I want to be in the house of God. Y'all making, making it sound like I'm wrong. How in the world do you go to a church and the majority of the saints is on first shift? God. The same one that called them is the same one that's opening a door for them. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, somebody. Amen, but the scripture says, let me get back to the scripture, speak it expressly, amen, it's making a big point that in the latter days some shall depart from the faith, amen, praise God, it means, hallelujah, that they're going to fall away, hallelujah, that word fall away or hypocrisy in the, in the Webster means a total, amen, desertion, amen, hallelujah, or departure from, amen, praise God, one's faith, one's principles, amen, or part, amen, they had part, amen, in the church, they had faith in God, amen, but somehow they fell away, hallelujah to God, praise God, they have departed from that faith, from what they first believe, somebody give God a shout. 
It means, amen, uh, hypocrisy means it, they have abandoned, uh, hallelujah, what was uh, what they once have voluntarily, hallelujah, profess. Hallelujah. They at one time, uh, nobody made them profess that they're Christians. Uh, and now, they have voluntarily fell away. They have walked away from what they professed. Amen. Nobody made you say, but now, uh, amen, somebody have persuaded you. Uh, amen. Praise be unto God uh, that you no longer want to run. Amen. Who am I talking to? Hallelujah, Jesus. Who am I talking to? Listen, amen, hallelujah. The Bible uh, encyclopedia says a standing away from, a falling away, a withdrawal, amen, a defection, uh, amen. That's what happens uh, when saints, praise be unto God, begin to go back into the world. They begin to fall back. Amen. I like talking to Pastor Siri because he, you know, he young. He always keep it hip. Amen. He said when he want to ease back, he just said, I'm going to fall back. Amen. Praise God. But how many know that when you rock with the Lord, you can't fall back? Amen. Because you might end up staying back. Hallelujah, Jesus. Everybody don't get back. Hallelujah, Jesus. Some have fell back and did not make their way back. Just ask Brother Saul. He fell back and did not get back. Amen. Into the grace and favor of God. Sometimes we can leave. Amen. And get out of the favor of God. And we assume because he's a forgiving God, he's going to forgive us. But no matter how. How long Samuel cried uh, for Saul? The Lord said, the book says, the scripture says that Samuel cried all night uh, when God said, look, I'm done with Saul. I've got me another king. Uh, cause Saul, uh, Samuel cried all night. It don't matter how much he cried. God told him to get up. He wasn't changing his mind. Come on. Come on. Amen. So it don't matter how much I intercede for you. It don't matter how much I pray for you. It doesn't matter how much it hurts me, amen, as your pastor to see you fall. I want you to understand how that when, when, when a saint falls, a, a true pastor is grieved. Amen. Hallelujah. A true pastor, amen, is hurt to the core. Amen. I have seen many saints over the years fall, backslide, amen, and several, not all, I'm going to be honest, uh, several have hurt me to the core to see them fall. I felt like Sam, uh, uh, Samuel, amen. I may not have shared a tear, but inside my heart was weeping, uh, amen, praise be unto God, but just like Samuel, uh, God tells me get up uh, wipe your eyes uh, amen because I got 7,000 that have not bowed their knees to Baal uh, I got some saints that still standing uh, that still running uh, that still reading uh, that still teaching that still preaching uh, get up uh, from their sitting down uh, amen hallelujah and see about my sheep somebody give God a praise Hallelujah, Jesus. Uh, but I want to talk about this falling, this defection, uh, uh, act or incident, hallelujah, of defecting, abandoning, abandonment of one's duty. Amen. God have blessed you and, and given you responsibility and position. And somewhere along the line, somebody have persuaded you uh, that that position is not honorable enough for you uh, or it's not worthy enough anymore. Uh, amen. It, it don't have no weight in your heart anymore. Amen. So you have backslid. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Uh, praise be unto God. Uh, hallelujah. There are many hallelujah incidents of backsliding in the word amen and, the, and our hypocrisy and it's not mentioned the word is not necessarily mentioned but we see many incidents of it amen in the word praise be unto God amen. 
2 Peter 3 and 17, I'm just going to hit a few. It says, ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things uh, before, beware lest ye also, hallelujah, being led, hallelujah, away with the air of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness. He said, look, if we don't be careful as saints of God, those of us who are standing, amen, praise be unto God, and we connect ourselves to someone that's not saved, amen, Praise God. Hallelujah. We too can be in error and fall, amen, away. I know a lot of times we connect with people in the world that's not saved and we think we can still stand. Oh, I got this. Amen. They ain't going to rub off on me. Amen. Praise God. But if you're not influencing them to get saved, they're influencing you to leave God. Come on, somebody. It's not working both ways. It's not no middle ground. Amen. How many know the devil don't want no middle ground? He come to kill, steal, and to destroy. He's not looking for a middle ground. He's not looking for a compromise. Amen. He's looking to kill you. He's looking to destroy you. Amen. Praise God. He's looking to steal your anointing. He said, yeah, you can stay right there. You can still come to church, but let me take your anointing. Let me cause you to fall and you sit still in the pew. Amen. But your anointing is gone. Your body is here, but God can't use you because sin is in your life. The devil don't have to get you out to church. Amen. To take your anointing. He don't have to get you out to church to kill you. Come on, somebody. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Listen, praise God. The scripture gives reference when it's talking about hypocrisy. It gives reference to worldliness. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. He says, look, they turn their eyes away from the truth. In, in, in Luke, the eighth chapter, it says, look, hallelujah, they turn their eyes away from the truth. Or let's turn to Luke, the eighth chapter real quick. I think I want to hit that verse. Hallelujah, Jesus. The eighth chapter, verse 13. Look at the scripture. It says, they on the rock are they which, when they hear, receive a word with joy. And these have no root, which from for a while believe, and in the time of temptation fall away. Uh, look, he's talking about hypocrisy, them falling away, a defecting, amen, praise God, a deserting right here, hallelujah. He says, look, some come in the church, uh, praise be unto God, and they fall on rocks, uh, amen, praise God, hallelujah. They come in, they hear the word, they're excited, amen, they receive the word, the word then brought them joy, it changes their life for a moment, but because it haven't taken root, amen, praise be unto God, hallelujah, when, hallelujah, temptation come. Look at that scripture. The scripture says, when the time of temptation come, they believe for a while. Amen. Praise God. They believe that God is the living God. They believe that Jesus died and rose. They believe in the Holy Ghost for a while. Amen. Praise be unto God. Hallelujah. But then the time of testing come. Amen. That fine man come in your ear. That sister that got that pop bottle shape brother Malik amen is hollering at you amen somebody uh, praise be unto God uh, that brother that got the money the car the house amen and the looks uh, he's hollering at you uh, praise be unto God hallelujah but and because you have no root uh, the scripture says uh, hallelujah Jesus uh, praise be unto God uh, that you fall away uh, amen the illustration here is, uh, is that you hallelujah gladly receive it but you have no depth you have no depth of what you have no depth of consecration
generation. Uh, I'm not talking about having roots in church. I'm talking about having roots in Jesus. Uh, amen. Come on, somebody. You don't have no depth of consecration. Uh, you have no depth to, hallelujah, endure hardness as a good soldier. Amen. Praise God. And not only that, you are not stable when you don't have no roots. Uh, amen. A wind can come and blow you right on up uh, if the roots are not rooted and grounded. Come on, somebody. Give God a shout. In the midst of persecution and a misunderstanding, all of a sudden you want to run. Sister so-and-so said something to me and I don't like what she said. Now you're ready to run because you ain't got no root. Huh? Ain't, ain't no level of consecration there. Amen. Somewhere along the line, you got in your flesh. Amen. Praise be unto God. Uh, you, you, you don't have no root. Look at this word. Root, hallelujah, the source, the, uh, hallelujah, that which comes from uh, the root uh, is, is the depth, a place, hallelujah, a strength. Praise be unto God. Uh, uh, a place where, where strength is reserved. Amen. Praise God. So when the trial comes, you don't have no reserves. You didn't use everything on the outside uh, but down on the inside uh, ain't nothing reserved uh, to take you through a storm uh, amen I need somebody to get rooted today uh, and grounded in the God uh, so when the storm clouds come uh, and the winds blow uh, you got something on the inside that tells you to go ahead We ain't got no roots, no roots. Uh, look at your neighbor and say, no roots. No roots. Huh? Huh? You just, you just on the surface. Uh, amen. Praise God. Use, uh, uh, the root usually, hallelujah, is underground. Amen. Praise God. The portions of the plant, hallelujah, that, that lacks buds and lacks, hallelujah, leaves, hallelujah. It serves as a support. The root serves as a support. Amen. Praise God. The devil hollering at you and you ain't got no support. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Inside of you. See, you got support on the outside. The sisters are rallying around you. The brothers are rallying around you. You got outside support, but you ain't got none on the inside. Come on. Huh? Doesn't matter what's growing on the outside. It's the inside that's going to maintain you uh, when the storm comes. Huh? Huh? Why did he walk away? Why did she walk away? She ain't had no root. Oh, they ran for a while. They was here four years, five years. Now they gone wide. They ain't had no root. He said, don't be surprised when people fall off. Why are you surprised? He said, the spirit speaking expressly in the latter days. Some shall depart from the faith. Giving heed to seducing spirits. Huh? They, they just give themselves over willingly. They don't fight about it. Listen, listen, I'm talking about the root. It serves as support. It draws the minerals and the water from the sources around it. Amen. To nourish you. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. The root, which you don't have, amen, praise God, is what the living water is looking for. Amen. Praise God. To nourish you. But how can the living water, that's why I hear the Holy Ghost, that's why you can come in church and hear a word and not be moved because the root that you got a little bit or none that you have is not receiving this li living water that's going forth. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When that's your source, amen, that's, that's, that, that's what feeds you, uh, amen, praise be unto God. Uh, and not only that, amen, hallelujah, it's, it's your source, amen, uh, water, praise God, from the soil around you, uh, amen, praise God. And also, hallelujah, praise God, sometimes stores food. Oh, okay, I'm going to say it again. Sometimes the root stores food. Amen. And I believe the word is the bread. So sometimes uh, down on the inside of you, uh, there is a reserve 
of some word. Eba shout out some bread or some food. Amen. To feed you. That's why I say in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in the secret of his pavilion. That's a word in the time of trouble, ain't it? That's some food that'll come up when you're running for your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. But we go through stuff and we ain't got no food. We, we, we ain't got no word. We ain't got no word stored up. We, we done went all week and ain't read the Bible. Huh? We done, went, we, we, we done went two, three weeks, a month. Amen. Picked it up, said a scripture, and thought we done enough. You ain't got no food reserve. Mm, you ain't got none. Amen, amen. So that plant got to die. The roots, uh, the, the roots, well, you ain't got no roots, but no food. Amen, somebody. And, and, and the roots, amen, I, I reiterate, Sister Val, is underground. Huh? It's what's in you. <laughs> Somebody ought to do self-evaluation right now. Yeah. What's going on inside of me? Uh, amen. Am I truly being rooted and grounded in God? How or am I by or fell on a rock? I ain't got no roots. Amen. Do I get a witness, somebody? I just need a few people go witness and go with me. Hallelujah. Amen. Saul so ain't have no roots. So when the temptation came, praise be unto God, he disobeyed God. Amen. Praise God. You done got stubborn. The woman of God can't tell you nothing no more. Hallelujah. You doing your own thing. Ain't no roots. I ain't going to fight with you, honey. Ain't no roots. You go ahead. It's the latter days. Amen. You fell off. I'm not going to fight with you, brother. You ain't got no roots. I'm just going to deal with the ones that got roots. I got to help them grow. Come on, somebody. I got to focus on the ones that's got roots. Hallelujah. Come on. I'm not mad at you. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. But check this out. The rooting, amen, of you. Hallelujah. I couldn't help you with that. That's something you had to do on your own. Amen. Because you look like you had roots. You, you, you look like, you know, you, 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 you handling your office, you running, amen, you here, amen, you're, you're praying, supposedly you're fast, you look like it, but you knew that you didn't have no roots. So you should have been dealing with the inner man or the inner woman. Amen. Come on, somebody. We always want to put it on the pastor. We want to put it on the saints. Amen. But the Bible says, save yourself from this untoward generation. The scripture puts it on us, amen, to save ourselves. Hallelujah. I'm preaching anyhow. Ha, God, I will shed that Hallelujah, Jesus. Listen, I wanted to talk to you today about spiritual suicide. Amen. You ain't got no roots. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm talking to saved folk. Amen. I'm talking to sinners that one day will be saved. But if you're saved and you're sanctified and supposedly and you feel with the Holy Ghost, first of all, if you don't have no roots, you better work on that thing. Amen somebody hallelujah but but this is a day and time that there will be a falling away amen this is a day and time that even if God hadn't shortened the days the scripture says the very elect would not be saved amen praise God hallelujah he's shortened the time in which he's coming back because if he doesn't a whole bunch of saved folk won't make it amen praise be unto God so listen listen I, I, I want to talk to you about suicide the word suicide is an act, amen, or instance uh, of hallelujah intentionally killing oneself. Amen. Praise God. It's an act. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise be unto God. Hallelujah. Or an instance of intentionally killing oneself. It means you deliberately kill. Amen. Yourself. It means. Amen. Praise God. The destruction or ruin are one interest. Hallelujah. You wanted to get to heaven one day, but somewhere along the line, amen, you begin to commit spiritual suicide. Amen. 
and you begin to intentionally kill your walk with the Lord. You stop coming in the house. You stop reading the word. You stop praying. You stop listening to wise uh, counsel. Amen. Praise God. And then one day you woke up and found your wrist slit uh, or your throat slit. Uh, amen. Praise be unto God. Uh, and you looked around uh, and you couldn't blame it on the devil and you couldn't blame it on the world. You tried to blame it on the saints, uh, but the only person uh, you should have blamed was your Because the saints didn't kill you. You committed suicide. You killed yourself. You, you, you killed yourself. The saints didn't do nothing to you. The saints can't save you. That's why he don't say saints save the saints. Huh? He said X save yourself. So if I can save myself, I can kill myself. Huh? And that's what we're witnessing in the church is spiritual suicide. Look at this word. Self-inflicted ruin of one's own prospects and interests. Prospects and interests. Self-inflicted ruin. I'm going to mess it up myself. Well, how do saints commit suicide? You commit suicide by sinning. Amen. Hallelujah. It's as simple as that. It's simple as that. Amen. And continue to sin until, amen, praise God, you are spiritually dead. We don't turn around quickly. We take it in a fault. I'm not going to say act like uh, we, I ain't never been taken in a fault. But the scripture says if we're taken in a fault, we need to be restored and run. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. I believe it says the righteous man get up. Praise God. Don't say the righteous stay down. It says the righteous man may fall, but he gets up. Hallelujah, Jesus. But and when you commit spiritual suicide, you don't get up. You don't get up. Come on, somebody. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. It's reckless. It's extremely dangerous. Amen. You are in a reckless place when you begin to kill yourself spiritually. Praise be unto God. Hallelujah. Praise God. It's self-inflicted. It's a voluntary death. Hallelujah. It's, you've done this on your own free will. Nobody's made you kill yourself. Amen. Praise God. I say again, you can't blame it on anybody else. Amen. I go back to your roots. That's because you didn't have any roots. Let's take Brother Judas, for instance. Amen. He walked with God. Amen. But witnesses the miracles. Here's the priest sermons. Amen. Just like the rest of the apostles. But he didn't have any root. Amen. Praise God. He came to the Lord. I hear the Holy Ghost. It's a sad thing to come in the house of God, act like you're running, and don't get rooted and grounded. Act like you changed, and you're still the same. Judas never changed in his heart. But look at God trying to turn him around. He exalted him, made him an apostle. Somebody said, why are you promoting him? They still doing what they doing. Because God is trying to change their mind. That's why he exalted them. He made Judas an apostle and gave him power to cast out. When he set them two by two, he set Judas with them. Uh, amen. Judas went uh, and Judas preached the gospel. Judas went uh, and he laid hands. Uh, he rebuked demons, uh, but he still wasn't rooted on the inside. He had not changed his character. Come on, somebody. I'm preaching anyhow. Come on. Hallelujah. He had not changed. You don't hear what I'm saying. He's in the house of God. He's walking with God. And he still haven't changed. He's still worried about money. God knows his struggle. And God gives him his struggle. <laughs> God knows he struggles with money, and he lets him carry the purse. <laughs> Y'all hear me? Amen. God knows he struggles with money, and he lets him carry the purse. You asking God to take it away. God said, no, I know you struggle with lust, and I'm going to let a fine sister talk to you. What you going to do? Huh? Huh? 
I, I know you struggle with lust, amen, but I'm going to let a fine brother talk to you. What you going to do? Come on. Uh, carry the purse. <laughs> Carry the purse, Judas. I know you a thief, but carry the purse. Huh? Come on, God, take this away. God, why you got this in front of me? Carry the purse. Huh? I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to help you through something. I'm trying to let you know that you got the source that makes you more than a conqueror with you. Amen, somebody, that you can get over any and everything because I'm with you. Uh, amen, praise be unto God. God said, I ain't never ran away from a fight, and I'm not getting ready to start running just because you're struggling. Uh, you better stand up, hallelujah, and go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the devil and pass this test. Carry the purse. Carry the purse. No, I ain't getting that brother out your face. Talk about lust with young people. No, he ain't taking the temptation away. What you got on the inside? Huh? What's going on in here? Hey Amen. How you handle the temptation going to tell me what's going on in here? Huh? How you handle the temptation going to tell God if you root it? Huh? If, if, if his word, if his, if, if his word is giving you that living water, if you're receiving that living water, if you're receiving the bread of life, your, your, your reaction is going to tell him what's really going on. Look at your neighbor and say, what's really going on? Look at the other one on the other side. What's really happening? Huh? See, because you can fake it with me. You can fake it with the saints. You can look like, hey man, you save, and you can look like everything is good, but God knows what's really going on. And, and believe me, after a while, what's really going on is going to manifest itself. You ain't going to be able to stand if you ain't got no root. You're not. You're going to fall back, Elder Sir, Pastor Sir. You're going to fall, fall back. <laughs> you're going to fall back. For real, for real. Amen, somebody. Amen. Judas, Judas was a thief. But, but Jesus still tried to deal with him. Jesus said, look, in John 6 and 70, he said, he's, Jesus told him, hallelujah, praise God. I, I did not choose you, praise God, the 12, hallelujah, and one of you, the devil. He knew he was, hallelujah, that the devil had influence in his life. But he was still trying to turn him around. God's still trying to turn you around. He know you ain't right. You sitting here right now. You listening, hallelujah, on TV. Amen. Praise be unto God. And you ain't right. Hallelujah. And you faking it at church, but God knows you're not right. He's still trying to turn you around. Hallelujah. Look, he spoke of G, uh, Judas betraying him, the scripture says. In verse 71, he says, He spake of Jesus, Judas Icariot, the son of Simon, for he it was he, hallelujah, that was uh, should betray him, being one of the twelve. He tells him on many occasions, uh, I know you're going to betray me. I know the devil is with me. I got one that, hallelujah, praise God. He said, all of you are clean except for one of you. Uh -huh. Amen. He already knows where you're at. You can't fool God. He already knows. Amen. Praise be unto God. But he's still trying to work with you. I want to compel you today to turn it around. Turn it around. Turn it around. You, you, you got ap to, ap uh, uh, ample time to turn it around. Judas had three years to turn it around. Three years carrying the money. And we see towards the end of that three years, he still ain't changed. That's why I'm saying you can fake the funk, but it's going to come out. Because when Mary anointed Jesus' feet, amen, Judas like, why are you wasting that ointment? He said, that's money that can go to the poor. But the scripture says, amen, he wasn't concerned about the poor. He was concerned because he was the one carrying the bag. That's what the scripture says. Huh? He wasn't concerned about the poor. He's still worried about the money. So that's why he said, look, you're going to give me 30 pieces of silver? I, I betray. 
Amen. I'll betray him because I, I know I've seen the miracles. Uh, historians say, uh, scholars say that he say, he's saying to himself, they, they say they believe that he said to himself, I've seen the miracles. I know, amen, that you can, I've seen you resurrect Lazarus. I've seen you do all kinds of things. So if, if they were to kill you, you could come back. Amen, praise God. Or you can heal yourself right away. Amen, somebody. Praise be unto God. Hallelujah. But Jesus didn't do it according to his plan. He went in the grave for three days. The scripture says that, hallelujah, that he felt so guilty or bad. Matthew wants to say he felt guilty and remorse. Amen. To the point where he went and hung himself. He committed suicide. Huh? He committed suicide. Why? Because he didn't change that three years. He stayed the same. You, you, it's a scary thing, I'm telling you. You better not stay in the house of God year after year and don't change. You, you, you better not. You better not. You, 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 better, you better get rooted. You better, you better get some food. You better get some water. Amen, somebody. It's a new day. It's a new day for me. It's a new day for you. It's a new day.